Here's an example that involves computing a circulation. Consider the one form, alpha, given by y squared dx plus 3x dy plus z dz. And I want to integrate that along a curve that is given by the intersection of two surfaces, the first being z equals sine of 7x plus cosine of 9y, whoa, and the second being x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now, that second surface, x squared plus y squared equals 1, that's a cylinder. That's really not so bad. But that first uh, thing, that graph, uh, z equals sine of 7x plus cosine 9y, that's all wavy, and it looks kind of crazy, and I need to take the intersection of these two surfaces in order to get this curve. Now, that curve is a, a loop, so this would seem to be a good Stokes theorem problem, right? The integral of this one form over a loop is the integral of its derivative over some surface that bounds that loop. So what surface do we choose? If we examine what is happening with these two surfaces, then there's a natural candidate for what bounds it, namely this wavy sort of surface, this graph of sine 7x plus cosine 9y. But that's kind of ugly. I'm not sure how I'm going to parametrize that nicely. I think it's possible, but it's going to be a mess. Now, let's keep in mind that Stokes' theorem works with all surfaces. Is there a better surface I could choose? Well, the way to answer that is to compute d alpha to see what it is. Let's compute that derivative. That gives me 2y dy, wedge dx, plus 3dx, wedge dy, plus dz, wedge dz. That last term is 0. Get rid of it. If I arrange these terms, I get quantity 3 minus 2y times dx, wedge dy. And aha, that 2 form is aligned with the xy plane. It is measuring projected area into the xy plane. So instead of using that wavy surface that bounds the curve, what I'm going to do is build a custom surface, S, that is given by using the cylinder for the sides. And I'm just going to follow that cylinder down for a while and then cap it off with a disk that is parallel to the xy plane, but, but below it by whatever distance I need to go. Okay, so Stokes' theorem says that the integral of this one form alpha over this curve gamma is the integral of d alpha over this bounding surface s. Now, this bounding surface s is really well adapted to this two form because this two form is a multiple of dx wedge dy, and the sides, the cylindrical side, is invisible to that two form. So all I have to do is integrate over d, this disk parallel to the xy plane, and I'm integrating 3 minus 2y with respect to area. Now that, that portion that is minus 2y, aha, that is, that is an odd function, and I'm integrating over a symmetric domain. That means I've really just got the integral of 3 over this disk with respect to area. To compute that, I take 3 times the area. It's a unit disk. That is 3 pi. That's our answer. This is a good example for seeing how you should be creative in choosing a surface to bound a curve when it's a Stokes theorem problem. Be sure to compute d alpha and see what surfaces work well with it. That's the lesson of this example.